welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana विश्वेश सच्चिदानंद वंदेहम योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संजरी हर्ति लीलया विश्वेश सच्चिदानंद वंदेहम योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संजरी हर्ति लीलया in this course we are concentrated on the three types of samasas namely the avyayi bhava samasa the bahubrihi samasa and the dvandva samasa currently we are focused on the avyayi bhava samasa which is a very important type of samasas in sanskrit <clears throat> the features of the avyayi bhava samasa can be represented in the form of an equation shown on this slide we have two independent separate entities x and y in terms of the word form as well as the meaning as well as the accent this x and y are semantically linked the speaker of sanskrit decides to merge them together and the process happens and a newly generated one output is ready there for use this one output is x y this is one output in terms of the word form as well as the meaning as well as the accent if we speak in terms of the constituents x and y we say that in this x y one unit x acts as the head both in terms of the word form as well as the meaning now x in the avyayi bhava samasa is an avyaya in almost all the cases now the formal feature of xy will be dictated by this x which is an avyaya and so now xy will also attain the status of an avyaya or indeclinable so we also see that the name avyayi bhava is significant because what is not an avyaya so y is not an avyaya so x y cannot be called to be an avyaya is now turned into an avyaya so x y becomes an avyaya on account of the sutra stated in the ashtadhyayi avyayi bhavascha 1141 also semantically the meaning of the avyaya acts as the head 
what it implies is that when x y as one unit is related to any other word in the sentence and the meaning of that word in the sentence meaning then it is through this x that this x y gets connected that is the normal way in which the processing happens in Sanskrit. Thus, this small equation summarizes the features of the Avyayi Bhava Samasa. And therefore, in order to highlight the head amongst x, y, we have put x in the bold characters. In the Ashtadhyayi, the grammar composed by Panini, Avyayi Bhava Samasa is treated at various places in different manners. For example, the Samasa Vidhayaka Sutras or compound prescribing sutras stating specific conditions under which the Avyayi Bhava Samasa takes place. This is a section that begins with 215, namely Avyayi Bhavaha, and continues up to 2121, Anya Patarthecha Saudnyayam. This is a small section in which we find the Avyayi Bhava Samasa prescribing sutras. Incidentally, 2122 is Tatpurushaha. From 2.122 onwards, the sutras prescribing the Tatpurusha Samasa begin and we have already studied them in the first course on Samasa. The Samasanta Pratyaya Vidhayaka Sutras, the sutras prescribing the end of the Samasa suffix. These sutras are found once again in a very small section from 54107 up to 54112. There aren't too many Svaravidhayaka sutras as far as the Avyayi Bhava Samasa is concerned. There are a few. One of them is 62121 where the word Avyayi Bhava is explicitly mentioned. Now currently we are studying some of the Samasa Vidhayaka Sutras stated in the section beginning with 215 Avyayi Bhavaha up to 2121 Anya Saudnyayam. We have already studied 216 which is Avyayam Vibhakti Samipa Samriddhi Vridhyartha Bhava Chaya Samprati Shabda Pradurbhava Paschat Yatha Anupurvya Yoga Padya Sadrishya Sampati Sakalyanta Vachaneshu. We have already studied various semantic conditions stated in this particular sutra in which an avyaya gets compounded with another interrelated subanta. We have also studied examples. Now, we also noted there that amongst these various conditions, there is one called Yatha. And there we stated that the word Yatha stands for its four meanings over there. And in that relation, there is one more sutra stated by Panini, which is what we study now. This is 217 Yatha Asadrishye.
yatha asadrashye there are two words in the sutra yatha which is in prathama ekavachana 1/1 indicating that this word becomes an upasarjana on account of the sutra prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam 1243 and then this upasarjana occupies the initial position in the samasa on account of upasarjanam purvam another sutra in the ashtadhyay 2230 the second word in this sutra is asadrashye 7/1 in the sense of other than similarity sadrashya is similarity asadrashya is other than similarity words continued are avyayam from 216 sup from 212 sahasupa from 214 samasaha from 213 avyayi bhavah from 215 samartha padavidhihi obviously from 211 and having put all these words together and their meanings together we get the meaning of the sutra in the following way the avyaya subanta yatha is compounded with another semantically related subanta only in the sense of other than similarity and the resultant samasa is called avyayi bhav i repeat the avyaya subanta avyayam and sup yatha yatha is there in the sutra is compounded with samasyate another semantically related samarthena subanta subantena only in the sense of other than similarity asadrashye and the resultant samasa is called avyayi bhav avyayi bhavah as we have already studied there are four meanings of the word yatha yogyata which means fitness or propriety or compatibility etc vipsa means repetition padartha nativritti means not crossing the capability of any given element and sadrashya is similarity now in the three senses the word yatha gets compounded that is what this sutra says let us look at the examples one by one yatha in the sense of yogyata or fitness or propriety or compatibility is the first case now the meaning to be conveyed is the teachers teach in a manner that is befitting a teacher adhyapakasya yogyam pathayanti adhyapakaha now this is the laukika vigraha yogya is the meaning which gets represented by yatha since yatha is mentioned in prathama it becomes upasarjana so it occupies the initial position in the samasa so we have yatha plus su plus adhyapaka plus nas yatha here is indicating or denoting the meaning of yogya now this is the alaukika vigraha yatha plus su plus adhyapaka plus nas this is the alaukika vigraha now the samasa saudnya applies therefore the pratipadika saudnya also applies and then we apply the sutra supodhatu pratipadika yoho 2471 and delete the sups so we have next step yatha plus 0 plus adhyapaka plus 0 and then we join these two words together yatha adhyapaka and we do the sandhi necessary savarna dirgha sandhi and we get the finally derived compound output namely yatha adhyapaka this is an avyayi bhava samasa 
this ends in short a. Now when this becomes an input of the sentence, we add the suffix su to make it a pada. So we have yathadhyapaka plus su. Now since this is an avyayibhava samasa, which ends in short a, yathadhyapaka, the su pratyaya is not deleted as is usually done when it comes immediately after an avyaya. Now this su is not deleted but rather it gets substituted by am on account of the sutra navyai bhavat atom tva pancham myaha 2483 navyai bhavat atom tva pancham myaha and then we have yathadhyapaka plus am then once again we apply the sandhi rules ami purvaha and we get the form yathadhyapakam this is the pada to be used in the sentence so when we use it in the sentence we'll see yathadhyapakam acharati shikshakaha teachers behave in the manner which is befitting a teacher yathadhyapakam acharati shikshakaha so yathadhyapakam is the subanta form of yathadhyapaka and this samasa is acting as the qualification of the action acharati that was the example of the word yatha used in the sense of yogyata let us now look at the example in which the word yatha is used in the sense of vipsa or repetition. When the meaning to be conveyed is you may invite each old teacher. Vriddham Vriddham. This is the laukika vigraha denoting the sense each old teacher. Vriddham Vriddham. Now this is transformed into the alaukika vigraha namely yatha plus su plus vridha plus am the repetition is the sense denoted by the avyaya yatha since the word yatha is mentioned in prathama in this sutra it becomes upasarjana and then it occupies the initial position of the samasa so we have yatha plus su plus vridha plus am. Now this is the alaukika vigraha and so this gets the pratipadika saudhnya. This gets the and so this gets the samasa saudhnya and then it gets the pratipadika saudhnya. And after that we apply supodhatu pratipadika yoho 2471 which deletes both the sups namely su and am and so we get yatha plus zero plus vridha plus zero and then we join these words together and we get the finally derived compound output in the form of yatha vridha a pratipadika and then we use the word yathavridha which is an avyayi bhava samasa an avyaya in the sentence and so we add the pratyaya su after the word yathavridha so we have yathavridha plus su now since yathavridha is an avyayi bhava samasa which ends in short a su is not deleted as is the usual practice as far as an avyaya is concerned but rather su is substituted by am on account of the sutra navyai bhavat atom tva pancham myaha so we have yathavridha plus am then we apply the sandhi rule and we get yathavridham 
and the sentence in which this word is used is yathavradham acharyan amantrayasva what this means is please please you may invite each and every teacher so here yatha denotes the sense of vipsa vridham vridham acharyan amantrayasva each old teacher you may please invite after having looked at these two senses and the examples in which the word yatha was used let us now study the third meaning of the word yatha namely padartha nativritti not crossing the capability of an element padartha is an element anativritti ativritti is crossing an element crossing the capability of an element anativritti is not crossing the capability of an element staying within the limits so in accordance with the capability of intellect a student studies if this meaning is to be conveyed we have matim anatikramya and chhatraha pathati and something like that matim anatikramya is the laukika vigraha now the word yatha stands for this anatikramya which is padartha nativritti because the word yatha is mentioned in prathama in the sutra yatha asadrishye it becomes upasarjana by prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam and then it occupies the first position of the samasa so we have yatha plus su plus mati plus am now matim anatikramya is the laukika vigraha yatha plus su plus mati plus am is the alaukika vigraha this gets the samasa saudnya and then it gets the pratipadika saudnya and then we apply supo dhatu pratipadika yoho 2471 which deletes both the sups and so we have yatha plus 0 plus mati plus 0 and finally we get the compound output in the form of yatha mati which means in accordance with the capability of intellect yatha mati now when we use the word yatha mati in the sentence we add the suffix su to it so we have yatha mati plus su and then because this is an avyay bhava samasa and avyay bhava samasa is an avyaya so we apply avyaya dap supaha 2482 and delete su and so we get yathamati as the subanta pada to be used in the sentence so when we use it in the sentence we get the following example yathamati chhatrah adhite a student studies or recites in accordance with his own capability without crossing the limits of his capability yathamati chhatrah adhite now when sadrishya is the meaning intended and denoted by the word yatha it does not get compounded for example devadatta is similar to yajnadatta this is the meaning to be conveyed yatha devadatta tatha yajnadatta what it means is yad vishesha dharmavan devadatta devadatta possesses a specific property the same property yadnadatta also possesses this is what is sadrishya to possess the same property that is what is sadrishya now in this sense you cannot compound devadatta and yatha yatha devadatta yatha devadattam yajnadattah this is not possible why because this sutra explicitly negates the samasa of the word yatha in the meaning of sadrishya or similarity when it says yatha asadrishye what is also observed is that this particular sutra 
is stating the samasa with respect to the word yatha only whereas the earlier semantic condition stated in 216 or was such that any other avyaya which also denotes the sense of yatha got compounded except of course in the sense of sadrishya now let us go to the next sutra 218 which is yavat avadharane there are two padas in the sutra yavat and avadharane yavat is 1/1 and therefore it becomes upasarjana by the sutra prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam and so it will occupy the initial position in the samasa avadharane is 7/1 in the sense of determination avadharana is yatta parichhed or yatta nischay the determination of a particular amount yatta determination of volume the words continued in this sutra are avyayam from 216 sup from 212 sahasupa from 214 samasaha from 213 avyayi bhavah from 215 and of course samartha padavidhi from 211 so the meaning of the sutra is the following the avyaya subanta yavat is compounded with another semantically related subanta in the sense of determination and the resultant samasa is called avyayi bhav i repeat the avyaya subanta yavat avyayam subantam avyayam sup yavat is compounded samasyate with another semantically related subanta समर्थेन सुबंतेन सह समस्यते इन द सेंस ऑफ डिटर्मिनेशन अवधारणे एंड द रिजल्टेंट समास इज कॉल्ड अव्ययी भाव अव्ययी भाव सो वेन द मीनिंग टू बी कन्वेड इज हैविंग डिटर्मिन द नंबर ऑफ वर्सेस सो मेनी आर द सेल्यूटेशन टू हरी सो हरी इज टू बी सेल्यूटेड एंड many times hari needs to be saluted and you decide about the overall quantity of these salutations on the basis of the number of verses so we have yavantah shlokah as the laukika vigrah now the alaukika vigrah is yavat plus jas plus shoka plus shloka plus jas now the alaukika vigrah is yavat plus jas plus shloka plus jas this is the alaukika vigrah this is termed as samasa so it is termed as pratipadika therefore we apply supodhatu pratipadika yoho and delete both the subs namely jas and jas so we have yavat plus 0 plus shloka plus 0 so we delete both the zeros and we have yavat shloka and then we apply the sandhi rule and we get yavat shloka as the finally derived compound output shashthoti is the sutra that we apply and we also apply avartika chatvam ami iti vacham and so we get yavat shloka as the finally derived compound output when we use this in the sentence we add the suffix su to make it a pada so we have yavat shloka plus su and then since the avyayi bhav samasa yavat shloka ends in short a so we don't delete su as we do it in case of an avyaya but rather we substitute this su by am on account of the sutra navyai bhavat atomtva panchamyaha 
So we have Yavat Shloka plus Am. Then we apply the Sandhi rule once again and we get Yavat Shlokam. And we use it in the sentence. We say Yavat Shlokam Achyutap Pranamaha. So many verses, that many are the salutations to Hari. So the salutations to Hari are counted in terms of the number of verses that we have in this particular text. Yavat Shlokam Achyutap Pranamaha. In the absence of the semantic condition of avadharana or determination, yavat is not compounded in this manner. So, for example, yavat dattam, tavat bhuktam. This is not avadharana. What it means exactly is whatever was given, that much was eaten. This does not tell you a specific quantity, specific volume of how much food was eaten. Navadharayati kiyat bhuktam. One cannot determine how much was eaten. So, since there is no avadharana, there is no iyatta paricheda, there is no compounding also over here. Yavat dattam, these are two different words. However, right now they are written together on account of the sandhi. Similarly, tavat bhuktam also. But there is no compounding that has taken place. Next, we study how the processing of Avyayabhava happens with remaining semantic conditions stated in the subsequent sutras in the Ashtadhyayi, how it progresses to derive the final output in the form of a nominal root or Pratipadika and how that output behaves in the sentence. This we shall study again in the next lecture. These are the texts referred to. Thank you very much.